Hi there everyone, welcome to Tech Travers. Today we're going to check out some emulation and gaming performance of the all new Pixel 7 Pro that Google was kind enough to send out for review. The written review is already live on techcravers.net and let me tell you this, I freaking love it. The camera together with the software in the Pixel 7 Pro is probably among the best I have ever seen in an Android phone and the AMOLED screen is absolutely top notch. But you didn't think I was gonna let it slip away without testing some gaming on it, did you? Of course not. So in this video, I'm gonna test some of my my favorite retro games via emulation and then round it up with some native Android gaming. But first, let's take a look at the specs. Alright, we have the new Google Tensor G2, which is an octa-core CPU. That means we have two X1 cores at 2.85 GHz, two A78 cores at 2.35 GHz, and four A55 cores at 1.8 GHz. For GPU, we have a Mali G710, and we got 12 GB of LPDDR5 RAM. This device here has 128 GB of internal storage, but you can get it with up to 512 GB as well. It has a gorgeous 6.7 inch LTPO AMOLED display at 1440 by 3120. It's also 120 Hz and supports HDR10 Plus and it's super bright at its peak of 1500 nits. And of course we get Google's latest OS which is Android 30. Now for controllers, I have my Xbox One controller, which I don't think need any deeper explanation. But on my right side here is the GameSeer X3 controller, which is a mountable controller that even has a fan on the back. You simply attach your phone as such, and it's working almost like magic. No need to download any app or anything, but you might need to configure some in-game controls. Unfortunately, as you can see, the camera bump on the Pixel 7 Pro is not optimal for this controller, but even if it doesn't fit perfectly, it won't slip out of the controller. First out of the games I have The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker for Nintendo GameCube. It runs here on Dolphin MMJ2 without any tweaks made to the settings. It's definitely playable, but I also think it can be tweaked to run even better. As you can see it struggles some to reach a solid 30 FPS, but as I said I haven't sat down and tweaked anything yet. I wanted to give you an out of box experience. Oh, one thing I had to do was to map my games here controller buttons to the correct correspondent button on a GameCube controller, but I have other videos on how to do that if you're unsure. Now if you're a follower of my channel, you know how much I love the Legend of Zelda series. It's basically the only games I make sure they really run on a new device before I buy it. So the next game up is Twilight Princess. It's also an old GameCube game and it runs on the same emulator and with the same settings as Wind Waker. This game actually runs a bit better and I can definitely see myself playing it on this device. Wii emulation is actually just as good as GameCube on this device and to see Mario Kart Wii run as good as it does is really nice. In my Wii tests I actually played with the OpenGL backend but I've actually heard that Vulkan might boost the performance even more. So I'm definitely gonna check that out for future videos. Anyway, here I am playing in native 720p and it runs in 60fps most of the time, with a few dips here and there. Let's bump it up a notch, here is Ocarina of Time 3D for the Nintendo 3DS. Nintendo 3DS is notoriously hard to emulate, but here I am playing it at two times its native resolution on the Citra MMJ emulator, and it runs absolutely great. The only thing I had to do was to turn off the option to enable hardware shader since it's known to cause heavy graphical bugs in some games, which it did for me. But after disabling it, as you can see, it runs buttery smooth. Next up is God of War 2 for PlayStation 2 running on the amazing Aether SX2 emulator that you can get directly off Google Play Store. Each PlayStation 2 game running on this emulator needs its own specific setting to run well, so you either Google what other people have done or you simply tinker with the settings yourself. It's really satisfying once you get it to run great. Of course you can save the settings so you never have to do it again. And keep in mind that different games need different tweaks on different systems. Oh, and you also need BIOS files for your PlayStation 2 games function and if you don't know how to get going with that I have other videos showcasing it or you can simply use Google. I was actually having so much fun testing these games on the Pixel 7 Pro that I nearly forgot to play with an external controller as well. But I remembered it for Metal Gear Solid 2 running on the same Aether SX2 emulator as God of War 2. And I was completely blown away to see how well this game run even outside in the rain on the cargo ship which seriously tends to reduce emulation performance in half. Here it runs in solid 50 FPS without any stutters at all. 
As an end to the emulation tests, I wanted to try PSP emulation using the PPSS PP emulator from Google Play Store, and I'm not sure I have ever seen PSP games run this well on an Android device before. Here it's running at 3 times native resolution, but you can probably go higher as well should you want that. And as this game is the most demanding from the PSP library, you can definitely play all your other PSP favorites at 100% speed as well. And lastly some native Android game testing, here with Diablo Immortal. The controller just straight up works, and as you can see it's not bad at all, perfectly playable in a high steady FPS. And this game looks so amazing on this device. Now you're obviously not gonna be able to see it as I see it, since both my camera and YouTube will compress the image, but oh my does this game feel like it was meant to be played on this device. And that's actually been it for this brief emulation and gaming test on the all new Google Pixel 7 Pro. What do you think of this device? Are you planning on getting it? Let me know in a comment down below. Also please comment which games you would like to see tested on this device and I'll see what I can do in upcoming videos. If you like content like this in general make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss anything in the future. Catch you in the next one, thanks for watching.